Alice needs to sew her shorts. <laughs> I already sewed them and then they ripped again. Because <laughs> your booty's busting out. There. That's true. Okay. Yeah, beer. No way. Any more drippy drippy? Yeah. <laughs> Stop videoing my helicopter. <laughs> So, no, over here is um, 37 cents a gallon. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Okay, go ahead and I will see how much can. Get the bag. Water. Put it in the hole slowly. Water. It's overflow. Oh no, stick it right in there. Weird. Want to open the other hole? I'll go turn it off. It's going in. Finally gonna get off the dock today. We've been here for a while waiting on weather and we got a couple more days of crop weather but we just got a sunny break so we're gonna take the boat and everybody on board and just go over to Beckway for a couple of days, get off the dock and just do something different for a little bit. So I'm getting a little bit stir crazy. Been sitting here for a couple of weeks and not able to get much work as far as filming done while we're waiting. So we've got a good weather window for next week for finishing off some more of our film projects. So while that happens, we're gonna go over and do some boat projects in Beckway. Just kind of get us off the dock here and uh, free things up. So we got to do a uh, scraping on the hull and stuff like that. So might as well do that where the water is nice and clear and sparkling. Not here in the marina and, you know, it's a nice marina, nice area and everything. But of course, we're in a lagoon. I'd much rather be in the wide open water that's nice and clear. So that's what we're going to do first. And then we'll take it from there. Got a couple projects. Then we'll come back to St. Vincent, go up the coast. We got a few things to film up the road there and uh, do some training on the way. So the boat's warming up, everything is set, all our systems are running. And you can see Sasha's just getting ready on the lines there. <laughs> Dinghy's all ready? Okay, dinghy's set. Engine's running, gauges are on. And get our nav systems up and running. And we're good to go. Okay, last minute messages before we lose internet. Save our soul. <laughs> Sending last minute text messages. All right, let's roll. One, Looks like everything is ready. How's Tiki doing? You ready? In a shiny new cage. Nice aluminum cage. No more rust, eh, Tiki? Yeah, no more rust. Hey, good girl. Good girl. We'll get you over to Beckway. We can get you out for a while, huh? Steady us out. The sail will actually help steady the boat because the wind will keep on one side. 
We're not going to put up the main sail because it's only like seven miles across. We're just going to put up the jib because the wind is on the beam right now. And the jib is our biggest sail, so that'll get us there in plenty of time anyway. And then we're going to unlock this side. And now you guys are going to take this line and start pulling. As I let out the furling line, you always want to just keep one or two wraps on the winch. And I just keep it handheld like this, so that as when you're pulling it out, I just let it a little bit at a time. So go ahead. See how I'm just letting it out a bit at a time? Wind is taking it now. Here, I'll show you. The best way to winch these in, let me show you. You actually want to kneel right in here. Get both knees flat into the cockpit and that way you can lean into it and get both arms on it. See one hand here, one hand there and that way you can get momentum building and just keep on going in one direction. Smells bad. Well, that's weird because all the coolant is leaking out of it. I just noticed that the temperature looked like it was going up a little bit, but it hadn't overheated yet. But now it's it's stalled. It's actually out of fuel. It looks like because the filter's not full. It's not hot. No, it was just starting to get hot. So I don't know what happened. That's what I'm filming. The coolant is draining out of it. Oh my god. Alright, so this is the engine hours journal. Let's see. Alright, so our last fill up was St. Vincent at 16,180 hours. So we're at 270 hours now. It shouldn't be empty unless we've been using burning extra fuel for some reason. So it's got a 105 gallon tank and usually burn about two thirds of a gallon per hour maximum unless we're running like at sea, but we haven't been running at sea a lot. But it definitely acted like it ran out of fuel and the fuel filter, the Raycor, is low. So regardless, we are going to have to put my reserve fuel in and get the engine running, but we got to find out why it's overheating. That's not really part of the same problem. So let's have a look. Nothing leaking out of the cap right now, so it must be finished, but I'm not even going to attempt to open that. There's got to be pressure in there. Okay, so there's no more coolant coming out, but it's definitely still got to be under pressure. It'd be stupid to try and open that cap right now. I've seen that thing go off like a volcano before, and it's not pretty. So we're going to leave that while it cools down and just deal with the fuel issue. We've got to have run out of fuel or something. I always carry a bunch of tanks up in the bow for fuel, spare fuel, so we're going to dump those in and bleed the system out again and then we'll look at the coolant and see what's going on there. What? The autopilot's gone too, all at the same time. I can steer but the autopilot's gone. Why is the autopilot off? Right, where you want it, Cap? What are we doing now, Rick? Well, the engine stalled unexpectedly. So I just want to make sure that there's no problems with the oil. You know, we had all those problems with salt water in the oil pan. So I just want to open that up as well and make sure that there's no seawater in the system before we do anything else. So let me check that here first. Yep, it's fine. Okay, we're good there. No water, that's good. Nope, oil's still clean. Oil's clean and at the right level. So we're good there. So the question is, why did it start overheating just because it got low in fuel? Put the lid back on and seal it. And now we need to bleed it out at the engine. So this is our bleed screw here. Can you see here? 
This is our secondary, like the main engine fuel filter mm -hmm. and the fuel line coming in and then this is the bleed screw right here. So we need to loosen that off and you can see air coming out of it. So I'm going to need somebody a second hand here, Aubrey. Mm -hmm. This is the bolt that attaches it and that's where the bleed screw is. So okay. we have to loosen that off and I need to go back there and pump fuel through. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pump fuel through and you watch and you tell me when you see fuel start coming out, if there's bubbles and stuff in it, then we want to keep pumping it till there's no bubbles. And then you're going to take this and tighten it like so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here you hold that Got it. and the light and just watch for the bubbles in the fuel. Any no air? bubbles though, no. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, start tightening it now as long as there's no bubbles and lots of fuel. Because what you're going to do is one at a time, we're going to loosen them. So we'll start with this one, you're just going to loosen it like... Mm -hmm. Okay, so tight from there, mm -hmm. you're just going to loosen it like that. Mm -hmm. Watch and see if you see fuel coming out, and when it gets clean fuel, or whatever, then you're just going to tighten it again. Got it. Okay, loosen number one. See anything? Not yet. Okay, number two. Number three. Just undoing the coolant cap. I put a towel over it just in case. But until we find the leak, we're going to fill it up with water, not coolant. Obviously hasn't hit the cylinders yet. So we wait. Yeah, the problem is you can only crank it so long. You overheat the starter and you burn the starter out too. So this is going to be an issue. Do you have a jump box? Basically, we're pushing our start battery to the limit because it's not starting. We're trying to crank it over to bleed the fuel system out. But without enough power, we're never going to get that done. So, I've got an extra lead I install here for just such an emergency. That basically, I take a high power line here and combine it to my house bank. So the starter battery now becomes part of the house bank and that just gives it that little extra nudge that it needs sometimes. that extra RPM sometimes so you need to have extra batteries available and be able to combine them quickly and that's the voltage we needed to spin the starter faster and that gets the vacuum of the fuel going faster and then it boom it just goes. There's still some coolant I just topped it up with water because I didn't feel like wasting coolant if I don't know it's going to blow it all out again. Is that in here? Yes. Cheers. Beautiful though. I know, it's so sexy. Drop the anchor right on the beach and then we'll back it up. We'll swim the anchor in. When we know that it's holding and the boat's steadied out, we might be a little bit close to this guy still, but we're still gonna let out some more chains. We'll fall back further than him. But we're going to put it in engine, or sorry, put the engine in reverse and just bear down on a little bit at idle speed, not full throttle. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want to do is put too much power on it. You just pull the anchor out because it's not even set yet. But we're just going to give it a little bit of throttle just to nudge it and then let it sit again, and then a little bit of throttle again, let it nudge it. 
Just keep nudging it, nudging it, dig digging it in a little bit deeper each time. And then at the end of all that, you should be able to put it in reverse and give it about 2,000 RPM and watch it, and you should stay stationary in the anchorage. And you just watch the bow of that boat in relation to whatever's behind it on the beach. And if all of a sudden the boat looks like it's moving forward and the tree's moving back, you're dragging backwards. So we're in good shape. We're doing good. So if you want to do the snubber, that's fine. And I'll go take it out of gear. What a cool girl to have on a boat, right guys? Hmm? <laughs> Grab onto this with your hands. Yep. Yeah, get rid of the hair band that's on your arm. Hair band. Okay, send your feet that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cross your ankles. Tip your head back. Help me out. You translate by doing it to her. <laughs> Same as I did, like this. <clears throat> Yeah, just move on. And then look at her. Beautiful. Maybe drop really your shoulder. Yep, yeah. drop your shoulder. Lean into me. Yep. Nice. Twerk, twerk, twerk. Yeah, twerk it, baby. <laughs> you don't gotta go to twerk, twerk, twerk.